Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Elderly woman found with throat slashed in Clarendon. A Clarendon man has been taken into custody after his wife was found dead with her throat slashed. The deceased is 67-year-old Pamela Gregory of the Lionel Town housing scheme in Lionel Town. The police report that she was attacked during an alleged domestic dispute. Her husband was taken into custody. Small fire at foreign ministry. There was a small fire on a wire that provides backup power to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Headquarters on Port Royal Street in downtown Kingston Sunday night. There were no injuries or damage to the building, the Jamaica Fire Brigade reported. The brigade's public relations officer, Emilia Ibanks, says a phone call was received at 9.40 p.m. There was some amount of damage to a wire that connected the three-phase transformer. The 11-store building was built with support from China and handed over to Jamaica in 2019. It cost over $4 billion. Scholarship launch in honor of slain siblings. A scholarship was launched on Friday in honor of murder below all age and infant students, Shari Lee and Rafaela Smith. The sisters, aged 12 and 5 respectively, were victims of the throat slashing massacre on the July 21 in Clarendon. The mother and two other siblings, including a 23-month-old baby, were also killed during the attack. This scholarship, a partnership between Clarendon-based charity foundation James and & Friends and the Delta Shield Company Limited, was launched on Friday during the school's graduation ceremony. Letera Fellow, who was set to graduate, was named among the top academic performers. Each year, two students will benefit from the Sherry Lee and Rafaela Smith Scholarship. One student entering grade 5 will receive $250,000 grant and another leaving grade 6 will cop a $500,000 grant. All recipients will benefit annually until the completion of territory studies. When it comes to James and Friends Foundation, academia is at the top, so we're looking for students who are constant performers, said Manning, sponsor and one of the foundation's director. Delta Shield's executive director, Patricia Garib, said the mass of murders have left her speechless. She said, however, that her team was pleased to be involved in the venture, adding that Delta Shield is committed to supporting the needs of students. Principal Nadine Gay Little has welcomed the initiative. We're happy for this. The names of Shirley and Rafael Smith will never be forgotten and will definitely use it as an incentive in their memory to help students to work hard towards being the beneficiary of this scholarship, said Gay Little. Gay Little lauded the foundation's founder and alumnus Otis James and other past students for continuing to make their stellar contributions to the school. Lay Magistrate Association condemns actions of JPs in Russian Barnett medical video. The Lay Magistrates Association of Jamaica is condemning the actions of the Justices of the Peace who participated in the video recorded medical examination of Roshane Barnett, the 23-year-old man accused of murdering a mother and her four children in Clarendon. The video of about six minutes emerged on social media Friday evening, showing Barnett being questioned by a team of four JPs, which included medical doctor Cook. The JP stated that they were present to protect the rights of the accused and to address any breach of such rights. But the association is asserting that their actions are in contradiction to the tenets of the role of a JP and were not in accordance with the modus operandi in the execution of such duties. Further, it is condemning the release of the video. We hope that this act of indiscretion was not an act of justice of the peace, said a spokesperson in a statement. The release of this video into the public domain, whether intentionally or otherwise, taints the impartiality of the role of the Justice of the Peace, the spokesperson said. The association is reminding JPs that they have a responsibility to be unbiased in the execution of their duties. Spanish Town Teen Missing Since Saturday An Ananda Alert has been activated for a 16-year-old of Elder Slipen Spanish Town St. Catherine who has been missing since Saturday, July 2nd. Zona Marie Lewis is of brown complexion, thin built, and about 5 feet 6 inches tall. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that about 11.30 p.m., Zona Marie was last seen at home wearing a pair of black and white shorts, red blouse, and a pair of pink and grey crocs. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing Zona Marie's whereabouts is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305. 
police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Dennis Meadows makes grand entry to PNP conference. Clad in orange shirt, former Jamaica Labour Party JLP Senator Dennis Meadows got a rousing welcome when he arrived at the People's National Party Conference Divisional Meeting at the Falmouth Primary School in Trelawney Sunday evening. Meadows parted ways with the Jamaica Labour Party recently and applied for membership in the People's National Party. It is not clear if his membership has yet been ratified by the hierarchy of the PNP. He vied unsuccessfully on the GLP's ticket to become the parliamentary representative for the Trelawney North constituency on three occasions. The constituency is now represented by the JLP's Tova Hamilton. Hero son slain. A Manchester family is in grief after a 15 year old boy was shot dead Saturday evening as he bravely came to the rescue of his mother during an attack by robbers. Vestoroy Sinclair instinctively reacted to screams from his mother, Paulette Ingram, who operates a shop in their yard in Turner Top District. 27 year old Antoinette Hill Sweeby, sister of the slain teen, said she cannot fathom how she lost her innocent and quiet brother, a student of New Forest High, to violent crime. Hill Swaby is filled with regret having not seen her brother, who was nicknamed G, in the last two weeks. They had planned to go out that very night for a social event and to catch up on happenings in each other's lives. Vesteroy's sister said she fell from her bed in shock when she got confirmation from Ingram of her brother's death. J does not deserve this debt. J is a humble youth. J caring. As long as J have him money and you ask him to buy you something, J go buy you it. Swaby Hill said in an interview. The crime system is getting out of hand, she lamented. Vester Roy, the youngest of his mother's four children, two girls and two boys, was believed to have held the potential to lift his family out of poverty and to end what seemed to be the generational curse of not completing high school because of financial constraints. My mother didn't have the money at the time to pay for our seasick. And my big brother didn't finish school either, so I always say to them, Mom have four children, then can't come out and don't come to nothing, so you guys are the two young ones leave. So I want only to come out and have something good, Swaby Hill recalled saying to G and other child who attended B.B. Cook High School and who recently passed seven CXC subjects. Ingram is a single mother and a true deal of all trades, operating not only as a shopkeeper but also as a farmer and hairdresser to make ends meet. Her Swaby has fond memories of Esther Roy, including how he would often rub her baby bump with olive oil while pregnant with her second daughter to ease tension in her swollen feet. He would also massage her aching shoulders. She also reminisced on the most watering home-cooked suppers prepared by Vesteroy, which filled the family kitchen with an irresistible aroma. The most recent meal he cooked that she recalled partaking of was a plate of brown stew chicken with white rice and a glass of strawberry juice that was mixed too sweet. That was the last time he ate out of my brother hand, she said, while on the brink of tears. Trisha Williams Singh, chairperson of the school board and Jamaica's Early Childhood Commission, said word of Vestoroy's death was one of the hardest news to receive. She told reporters that Sinclair had a promising future and was never misguided or had to be sent to the principal's office for indiscipline. Describing the school's loss as great, Williams Singh said that Sinclair had just concluded end-of-year examinations last Wednesday and was looking forward to transitioning into grade 10. Our school is quite shaken at this time. New Forest is a family, it's a small school, it's a community high school, she said. The board chairman noted that the South Manchester era has been plagued by multiple robberies in recent times and that parents have grown concerned about the security and safety of their children. William Singh added that the school is preparing to offer assistance to the family through counselling or contributions to burial. Vestora was reportedly a lover of music and the top performer in the school's performing art department with his last performance of note at Jamaica Day celebrations. Arnaldo Allen, principal of New Forest High, described the late teen as a quite an unassuming student enrolled among the pathways one group which performed exceptionally well. Allen, who condemned the murder and visited the family home on Sunday, said that the entire community has been visibly shaken. He also lamented an antidotal rise of armed robberies in the area. The gun is just knocking at the doors of our communities and I wonder when it will stop, Alan said, while encouraging the country's leaders to seek divine intervention to tackle the perpetrators of evil. 
Mobitox office to undergo major upgrade, services being relocated. The tax office in Montego Bay St. James is being temporarily relocated as the building undergoes major renovations and upgrades. Services are being moved to the FCJ building and Altman Way in the town effective Monday, July 11. To facilitate the relocation exercise, Tax Administration Jamaica TAG says the tax office will be closed to the public on Wednesday. As a result of the closure, members of the public are being encouraged to visit either the Lucy or Falmo tax offices to conduct their usual business. Additionally, taxpayers will be able to access the usual weekday services at both the Falmo and Lucy tax offices on Saturday, July 9, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., which will facilitate as smooth a transition as possible of the relocation exercise. Arrangements have been made to accommodate customers conducting TRN services to do so at the Authority's Bay West Training Facility, Bay West Plaza, second floor, on Thursday, July 7 and Friday, July 8, after which persons may conduct these transactions at the new location. The TAJ temporary location is projected to last approximately three years. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.